Hi, Trevor. Hey, Danny. How come you're not live streaming the Monster Hobby's build party today? Because, Danny, this video will be released on Christmas Day, and I'm pretty sure that our viewers will not really want to tune into a full-out live stream. I think they'd rather spend time with their families. Oh! Merry Christmas, everybody! Merry Christmas! And here's to a better 2022 moving forward! Okay, so what are we going to do today? Well, Danny, as you know, if I were to paint the parts of our van upstairs in the computer room where we do our live stream, Mrs. Monster Hobbies would just not be very happy about that. What a good idea! So what's the first step, then? Well, Danny, I just finished scraping down all the model car parts, so now we have to wash them. Wash the parts? Why do we need to do that? Well, you see, Danny, we need to wash the model kit because at the factory, they spray on this special type of mold release agent, and that makes it so that when the plastic goes through the mold and cools down and is ready to come off the mold, that that mold release agent will act as a oil or grease to make the model kit pop off of the mold. Really? I never knew that before. And, Danny, we also have to wash a model because we've been touching it, and all the oil from our hands and fingerprints get all over the model. And if you try to spray paint your model with fingerprints and mold release agent and all that, you're going to run into some very major paint problems. What kind of paint problems? Well, Danny, according to my automotive refinishing book, you can end up with dirt in the finish, or paint peeling, and even fish eyes could also occur in your paint job. Okay, well, let's go and clean them then. So here we are at the sink, and I have this nice purple dish soap that I'm going to use, as well as an old, old toothbrush to scrub out any of the dust and debris and oil out of items such as our engine block here, as well as our two front seats and our dashboard. Now I'm going to try to clean up all the parts, but here I'm just showing you just some basic things. So let's begin by actually pushing down the stopper here. And then I just want to get some nice mild water and add a little soap in here. So that temperature feels about right. Okay, then I'll shut the taps off. And I'll begin by just grabbing some soap here and scrubbing down this engine block. Now this should remove any of the sandpaper dust and any of that kind of thing, as well as just clear off any of the fingerprints that we have on there, as well as mold release oil agents and anything else that could affect our paint job. So they would just do those. Then I will give these a nice rinse. And there we've got our parts clean of soap. And I will just put these on a little towel to dry. And be very careful though not to have a linty towel in which the lint will get sucked up onto the model here. So make sure it is lint free. Next up we have the van body. And what I want to do for this is I want to use some sandpaper and wet sand the sides of the body. And I have 400 grit sandpaper, which I've cut into a little strip here. And I'll just throw that in the water so it absorbs a little bit. And then after I sand with the 400, I want to catch it up with the 600. And what that will do is it will take out some of the harsh scratches from the 400 and make them a lot smoother. And this will give the primer paint a nice area to bite into, which will allow it to get the paint adhered onto this body nicely. So now that our 400 is nice and wet, we'll just submerge our body here. And I'm going to sand everywhere on this thing, including the roof. But let's begin with the side panels. So with this we don't want to cross sand, we just want to go back and forth. This is to give it quite a bit of a bite. Now make sure, of course, that you don't accidentally sand off door handles or anything like that. This is just to uh, get that surface nice for paint. And of course, get down into all those little cracks as best you can. You can even fold your sandpaper 
just to get a little bit more inside here. And that is the basic idea. Now once you have your panels all sanded down with the 400 and the 600, just go over this again with your toothbrush, making sure you get along any of these panel door lines or up in here, where of course this will uh, hold dust in and be quite a bit of a problem. So now I've finished with the 400 and I will go over this fan again with our 600 grade, right there, and that will smooth out those 400 grade scratches and make this a lot smoother for that nice paint coat, but still not take away from the actual bite of the sandpaper. So that is what we want to try to accomplish here. And uh, remember around here on these edges, we also had to sand it with that 120 grit. So all of this fine sandpapering should also remove some of that. Actually it's 180 grit, but still. You need to get this thing as smooth as possible. And uh, that will uh, help save a lot of the sanding work, which we also will have to do on our primer. And of course, what we'll do is we'll put on maybe two coats of primer and three coats of color onto this van, which will make for a very nice model in the end. But by sanding this in between coats, you're constantly providing that tooth for the next coat of paint to uh, adhere into. And that tooth is quite essential for getting your paint to stick onto models for many, many years to come. Now you may also want to establish a pattern when you sand, like perhaps starting with the roof or doing the right hand side and moving along to the left hand side or vice versa. It's all up to you, but just make sure that you get everything nice and sanded on here so that it is very smooth and that you're not having to sand out too many of the scratches once you lay on that gray primer coat or black primer or whichever color you want to paint your van. I do believe I'm going to try for that red with the white roof or even the white with the red. I haven't decided yet. How would you do your uh, paint job on this? Let us know down in the comments below. White van or red and white or maybe your own choice. So there it is, all nicely sanded out. And what we'll do is we will just rinse it off. I'll drain the soap water from down below. And there you are. One other thing you could do is sand on the inside just a bit so that any of the overspray and whatnot will stick on the inside as well as the interior color. Gee Trevor, why is the van sitting in the dish drying rack? Well Danny, that's because what I'm going to do here is I'm going to leave it in the dish drying rack overnight so that all the water can evaporate off the model and it is nice and clean without any greasy fingerprints on it. Oh that makes a lot of sense. Well, Danny, did you have a good sleep last night? I sure did, and I had visions of sugar plums dancing in my head. Well, that's good, because what we can do today is gather up all those little tiny model car parts that we cleaned up last night, and we can set them up, and I will show you how to do that so that they're all ready to paint. All right, well, I'd sure like to see how you set that up. So the first thing we need to do, Danny, is now that we have all the parts loose, we have to figure out what colors to paint them. So what I've done here is I've gone in and opened up the instruction sheet over to that paint chart right there. And uh, as you can see, each of the colors is represented by a letter on our instruction sheet here. So what I've done is I've gone through and I've marked down what parts are painted what color. So what we will do here is find all the parts that are in the box and get them all arranged into whatever color we're going to paint them. So once we figure out what color we're going to paint them, we need to put them on something. So I've got this old box that I use for painting. And as you can see on this side, it's uh, pretty well painted up. So what I do here is I've got this tape right there. This is a two inch wide painter's tape. So I just take a bit of that off and easy to rip. 
And then what I'll do is I will loop it back onto itself like this. So you get this nice circle here. And then you can just lay it down. And then once it's laid down, you can take your model parts and stick it directly right onto that tape. And it makes for a good little stand. Another way to mount your parts is just by using something simple like this pointer stick here. And we can put it into the end of the transmission. Or you could drill a deeper hole into here where your pulleys are going to cover it up in the end just so that the stick can go in further and make a tighter fit. And what you would do then is clamp the stick down once your part is on there onto something just so that it can be held while you paint. Here's the suggestion for those smaller parts. What I've done here is I've taken apart a closed peg and just reversed it so that it ends up with a pointed edge. And this you can easily hook on to your small parts just like that. And this will give you both a handle while you're spray painting as well as a nice way in order for this to dry the part without touching the top of the table. Wow, those are some really good painting suggestions to hold all those little pieces in place. Thank you, Danny. And here's another little tip for painting these frames. You just get a, a wire like this one. I don't know if you can see that too well. And then you bend a hook on one end and bend another hook on the other. And then you can put this wire up like here on the frame or through one of those holes. And then you hold the wire up here with one hand and you can spray paint it this way. And then if you get another wire, you can turn this over while it's, this paint is still wet and then paint it from this way. So you can get your uh, spray paint going on this angle first and then back down this way to get the full 360 degree paint on there. And here's another painter's trick, Danny, because on the end of our axle here on this rod, we want to keep this end covered because that's where our wheel retainer clips are going to glue on. So I'll just take a bit of this green masking tape and we can carefully put it right there and roll it around just on the end of the axle so that now our nice wheel end will be protected from the spraying paint and then we won't have to scrape that off afterwards in order to make that wheel retainer clip glue on. Now once you have both ends of the axle covered, we can do a little other trick I know. Now if I try to clamp this on here and paint it, as you can see I will basically need to hold this thing out this way. But as it is, this would be too wobbly and easily fall over. So I'll take another one of the clamps and I'll just put the end of this clamp onto there. And then that way you've got a bit of a nice hold on there. And if you want more stability, just take another clamp and clamp it on this way, coming out this angle. So then you've got a nice L shape, which will never fall over. And now in order to hold our body, here's another trick. You can take something like a regular pop can and get another loop of your tape there. And just put the loop onto the bottom of the pop can in that parabolic dome underneath there. And then with this, you can easily take your van body and then get inside there. Make sure that tape sticks to the roof. And then you have a nice handle with the pop can. And at the end, you can also just set this on a table where it will dry and be nice and stable. So with all our parts ready, Danny, I think we're able to head outside and add a bit of spray primer onto these and get them ready for the final coats, which will be coming up in the next video. Okay, Trevor, I'll go outside and watch you put some primer on these model car pieces. So here we are out here on our wintry day, and I was going to do a demonstration on how to put primer paint on the van model, but the problem was that the can of primer decided to jam up in the nozzle and not come out. So instead, I have Tremclad Semi-Gloss Black, and I'm going to paint that on our components here that are using the Semi-Gloss Black. So basically, uh, let's pretend this is the body for a minute. One thing you want to do when you spray paint is think about the rain and how rainwater falls onto a vehicle, what it hits first. Usually that would be the roof and then the sides and then you go along the fronts and that's how you would paint your, uh, your van body. 
So this is the undercarriage, as you can see. I also have the frame. So I'm just going to shake up my trim clad here. I ran out of gloves, so I'm using a plastic bag on my hand. <laughs> but anyway, so I'm going to start over here with the spray paint and then move across and come off the ends. You also want to keep your wrist straight, which I'm not really doing too well. You don't want to swing because if you swing, you end up uh, getting inconsistencies with the paint. So here we go with our semi-gloss black. Now I should be priming this, but nice thing about Tremclad is it, it kind of acts as a primer as well as a paint. So there we go. Hopefully I'm getting this on center of the camera. All right, so there it is, painted with the semi-gloss black. Oh, and I missed a spot here, so you got to turn it this way. Don't worry about my jacket. It is an old, old one. I actually have pictures of this, me wearing the jacket in Denmark when I had my first girlfriend over there. And uh, that's going on a long time ago. So there we are. Hopefully I won't get any uh, specks of water in here because of the snow. So next I'm going to paint the frame. And like I said, I've got it on two wires now, one at the top and one at the bottom. And just to show you how this works, it's going to go like this. So I'm going to spray downward in one direction. And then turn the frame around. I think I'll go across here. Basically down again. Okay, and I'm turning it this way. Find my uh, spots that I missed. Okay, now I gotta do the do the turn this way. Yeah, and I recommend you don't paint when it's starting to snow. <laughs> I just want to do this, you know, just to show everybody how it works. So now I'm going to try to grab the bottom of the wire, turn this up this way. Okay, there we go. Then, let's see, is that still in camera? I'm going to paint down this way. I can go across this time. But there we go, painting the bottom edge of that frame. Maybe I just give it some more of these over here. Yeah, there, I totally missed that side. Okay. Well, we're also getting some wind. One thing I did was I covered the camera with saran wrap. <laughs> and I see overspray is hidden in that direction. Right to the legs of my tripod. Okay, so there's our frame done. And now I'm going to paint all the rest of the parts on my own without filming, so you can see those in the next video. Now I'm going to leave these parts to dry in our nice warm house. Well, Danny, I think that's pretty much all that I can show anyone for this week because that primer paint has to dry. So what we will do is we will say Merry Christmas and have a good one, and we're going to see you at the next video. Okay, Merry Christmas, everybody. And we'll see you on the next Monster Hobbies model car build party, which will be on New Year's Eve.